Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has a firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's listen now to the word of God. your commands. Lord, I, love your commands. I have said, O oh Lord, that my heart is to keep your word. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold or silver pieces. Lord, I love your commands. Let your kindness comfort me according to your promise to your servant. Let your 
and let my passion come to you, that I may live, for your law is my delight. Lord, I love your commands, for I love your commands more than gold, however fine. For in all your precepts I go forward, every false way I hate. Lord, I love your commands. Woeful are your decrees, therefore I observe them. The revelation of your word sheds light, giving understanding to the simple. Lord, I love your commands. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm going to come into the shade because I'm very white and I'll get burned in about five minutes. The big day was coming and there was fear, but there was also a little excitement in me. I've never done this before, so I needed help. 
I called some who were experienced with this, my good friends, Terry and Denise. I said, can you help me? They said, we will be there to help you. So we got up early, we stretched, we did all the things that were necessary, put on our game face and said, we're not gonna get pushed around. And off we went to Costco on, good, on Black Friday to shop. Very serious endeavor. I was fearful, but we did well. Because we were in search, not of the Holy Grail, but of the big screen TV that all of you already have. And I know that you wanted your priest to have it as well. So as soon as we came in, we spotted the TVs. We went right over and I went to look around. My friend says, this is it right here. This is the last one. I said, well, I want to make sure that this is the best deal. I'm going to look around. I'm going to check prices. And he says, this is it. He's holding on to it. And other people, the sharks started hovering around, right? The others are saying, well, we want to take a look at that. And he was holding on to it. He says, this is it. I said, I still need to look around. I need to find the right one to make sure. Because I'm going to save lots of money, right? I'm going to feel good by saving lots of money. And we got that big screen TV. And as we were leaving, I felt very good because even the employees were saying, you got that for how much? You got a steal. I said, oh, I felt so good. I like to get a good deal. Do any of you like to get a good deal? Yes. Right? I don't want to be ripped off. I don't want to be taken advantage of. But when I go into the store and I see the section clearance, I said, that's for me. When I hear about 50% off, I get chills in my body. It's exciting, right? Two for one special, anything, anything. But don't tell me it's full price because I'm probably not gonna buy it. We all like to get a good deal. And we wonder, the deal searcher, searcherers, is there a deal to get into heaven? Is there a two for one special? I know they're not gonna have any going out of business or moving sales. Is there a good day that maybe I can try to sneak in the back way? But there's no deal. No discounts. The great news is heaven is free. That's even more exciting to those who like deals. When you hear the magic words free, whenever we give away calendars, or we have ashes to give away free, people, people of God love when the church has something free to give away, right? We don't like that. And this is the greatest of all gifts that God says, I'm giving you the gift of the kingdom of heaven. I'm giving you eternal life. But paradoxically, it's not free. Because Jesus already paid the full price. He paid the full price for you and for me. He says, yes, I offer to you the kingdom of heaven. Free, without any attachments. I want you to be with me forever. I want you to dwell with me and to remain in my love. But you have to be willing now to make the full commitment. I want you in your heart to say that you'll be willing to give everything away. To sell all that you have in order to get the pearl in order to get that treasure. Because nothing, nothing compares to the kingdom of heaven. If it's not there and it's not the greatest priority, then this is a good time to review and assess our priorities. And what is most important in my life? Is there something or someone 
before God, before the kingdom of heaven. Because the Lord says, no, I want to be first in your life. And I'm a jealous God. I want you to love me more than anyone else. So that you have this tremendous love for me as the love that I have for you. This reciprocal love going back and forth. Heaven is priceless. We're only here for a short time. Just a short time. And we all know that we can take nothing with us. That big screen TV I got, it's going to stay. Not going to put that in the casket. Not going to try to haul it out to the cemetery. It's going to stay, just like everything else. The house, the cars, everything stays behind. But we come before the Lord. We say, here I am, Lord. I try to live for the kingdom more than anything else. And sure, maybe I had a nice big screen TV or a car, or good things in life, but those good things did not mean as much as the kingdom of heaven. Amen? We may have those, but it's where we place that in our heart, of saying, what's most important? What is the most important thing in our life when we say, you, Lord, you are the most important. He says, that's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear more than anything else. And so with that, we pray that our faith be strong. We'll be tested. And so maybe that's not the first thing in our life, but we ask the Lord God to send the Spirit to help us in our journey so that we become stronger in our faith to recognize the gifts that Jesus gives to us. The great gift of the Eucharist, the gift of all the sacraments, to help us on our journey to the kingdom of heaven. In our first reading, we see the decision that Solomon makes when the Lord God comes to him and says, what do you want? Imagine if the Lord God asked you, what do you want? Oh, hmm. Well, I want a bigger house, I want a faster car, I want a nicer boat, I want... Is that really what you want? We should ask for what God wants. God, what is, what is it that would be best for me? He says, look at Solomon. Ask for wisdom. In wisdom, we're able to say, if I'm rich, thanks be to God. If I'm poor, thanks be to God. If I'm healthy, thanks be to God. If I'm sick, thanks be to God. Our wisdom helps us to discern all situations at all times and all places, and then we're at peace. That's the great gift of wisdom, of understanding and having hearts that are in union with the heart of the Lord. That's the greatest gift, is to be wise and have an understanding heart. Solomon received that great gift. Because the Lord said, oh, you could have asked for money. You could have asked for more power. You could have asked me to destroy all your enemies. But you asked for a good heart, to be wise, to be understanding. And so Solomon was granted that. Let's ask for that as well, each and every day, to ask for that great gift of wisdom. The wisdom that says, I recognize that the kingdom of God is at hand. Right now, the kingdom of God is at hand, right here, right now, and helping not to throw it away, but to say, well, that's not that great a pearl. It's not that great a treasure. No, it is. It's the greatest treasure. And that we cherish that. It's a great honor as a priest to be by the side of those who are dying. To be with them, to prepare them for the kingdom of heaven. If they have an opportunity to speak, to go to confession, to receive the Eucharist, to be anointed with the holy oils, and to say, I am ready. 
be at peace. And the family, the family that often is by the bedside, they are at peace. One of the expressions I use right at the very end of all the, the sacrament that I sometimes whisper into the person's ear or say quietly and the family can hear, I say to that person, will you put in a good word with the Lord when you get there? I need all the help I can get. I said that last week, the person was very cognizant and he smiled and I said, yes. Yes, I've got someone who's gonna intercede. Someone who's gonna intercede for me. I'm not looking for a discount or a deal to get into heaven, but maybe just a little help. And that's where we have the saints, the angels, our blessed mother. They're there to help us. They're there to help us to get into heaven. Heaven is serious business. Don't take it lightly. Don't put off tomorrow what needs to be today. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Seize it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through them all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and look forward to the resurrection of death, and life of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, let us remember those who most need our prayers and those for whom we have promised to pray. For all who minister in the church, serving those who are forgotten, healing the sick, teaching the ignorant, and praying for the salvation of all, and for those called to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, eager to share the lasting treasure of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who show us the paths to peace, for missionaries and diplomats, for those who create friendships in foreign lands, for wise leaders and brave public servants, working patiently for peace in a violent world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unemployed and underemployed. For those whose livelihoods have been adversely affected by the pandemic. For all who work in difficult and unjust conditions. For fair pay a safe environment, 
and adequate medical care. We pray to the Lord. For those who are in prison, for mercy to those who are ready for another chance, for compassion to those who are tempted to despair, for those who want to live good lives but do not know how to begin. We pray to the Lord. For an end to the pandemic, for medical personnel, scientists, government leaders, and all who are working for the good of others. We pray to the Lord. For all in need of healing, including Roger Roman. We pray to the Lord. For all the dead, including the recently deceased Surrender Singh Prewal, Jamie Albinto, Rosemary Sweet, and victims of COVID-19. For those who mourn the loss of loved ones due to natural disasters and for those who perpetrate violence and destruction. We pray to the Lord. God of wisdom and love, hear our prayers this day and make us wise so we will be faithful followers of your Son. Increase in us your many gifts and let our sharing of these gifts become our way to eternal life to him who is Lord forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Lord, we ask for Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, 
we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, 
Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For Holy Communion, so I'm going to prepare for communion. You can, I will be here on this side. We'll have one line that will come in from this side. And then everyone else, Joe, can just walk down the center of the street. And then, as if you're going into the front of the church, go into the covered walkway. And then, in, underneath the cloister here, and uh, Father Matthew will distribute communion there. And then we'll come back this way to the back of the
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I'll mark the three announcements. Good morning again. So, just a couple of announcements. Today is uh, the 26th of 26th of July, right? Because and it's the feast of Saints Joseph and Anne, the grandparents of Jesus, the parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and so it's a very special um, uh, day uh, for the church, for our parish, because you know this is uh, this is presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary Parish. Just inside the door of our church, there's a big bronze father wreath image, and everybody thinks it's the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. It's really, it's really Joachim and Anne, San Joaquin and Saint Anne, and their child Mary, the baby Mary. And so uh, they they presented the child Jesus. Oh, excuse me, they presented the Blessed Mother in the temple, and they were the ones who presented him. So uh, this is a nice day for our parish, and it's also a nice day for grandparents. Grandfathers and grandmothers, and I will bless the grandparents in just a moment. Uh, it's also uh, an opportunity for the, the church in the United States, the bishops of the United States, have declared this to be um, National um, Natural Family Planning Awareness Week. It's also the anniversary of Humanity Vitae. Uh, every year there's a week to uh, promote this um, safe and effective and um, uh, wholesome way of planning the family. And it's kind of uh, uh, best kept secret in the Catholic Church. It's very effective, and a lot of people know about it. And so it's kind of like a pearl of great price or a buried treasure. And so it's something that the bishops and the church uh, promotes. And so we're going to have a class on Wednesday. I'm going to give a Zoom class. So if uh, any engaged couples or married couples want to learn about natural family planning, just an introduction. It'll be from 7 to 8 on the internet. You can call the parish office to see the website for how to connect to that. I'm also going to have a Zoom Bible study uh, tomorrow night at 7, from 7 to 8, also on the internet in my Zoom room. We're going to learn about the parables of the Gospel of Matthew. We had a class last week, and one more uh, tomorrow at 7 o'clock. So again, call the office or see the website to find out how to click and enter and participate in this Bible study uh, online. Also, let's see. Um, another announcement is that during the week we have morning masses. We have... Um, uh, times for confession. We also have times for private prayer in the church, and uh, we can only, we have to be outside for the liturgical celebrations. But people can come into the church for private prayer still, as long as we keep our distances and all. So that's going to be as usual from Monday, just Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from nine to ten here at the church. You can come to adore the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, which of course is the great pearl of great price for us, for us Catholics to approach the Lord in the Eucharist. And now again, I'd like to just uh, congratulate the God, grandparents, grand grandfathers and grandmothers. If you're a grandfather, please stand up. If you're a grandmother, please stand up. Grandparents, please stand up. I'm going to bless the grandparents on this feast of St. Philip and the Hand Lord. Bless these men and women who are grandparents, grandfathers and grandmothers. Bless them. May St. Philip and the Man, the parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary, intercede for them and uh, bring blessings upon them. Bless their homes, their families, and reward them. Give them a recompense and reward for the goodness, their goodness to us, their children and grandchildren. Amen. God bless all the grandparents. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Congratulations. Yay! Happy Grandparents Day. Ah, how about my parents talk about me? I forgot to mention that if you'd like to give a donation to the church, and we thank you for those who give online as well, on the way out, as you go out in your cars or at the door, at the gates, uh, the entrances, you can uh, give a donation to the parish. As I mentioned in my homily, there are no deals or discounts to get into heaven, but certainly being generous now helps in God being generous to you later. Amen? Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life.